Hi, and welcome to Introductory Statistics. Let's start off the course by looking at Chapter 1 from Robert Pagano's Understanding St Statistics in the Behavioral Sciences. This first chapter is lays down some of the foundations for doing statistics, some of the key uh, definitions, some of the key concepts, and we're going to be going over a few of them, not all of them, uh, in this uh, presentation. Let's start off with why is statistics important? Uh, most people don't want to be taking a statistics course. Others are saying, oh, this sounds kind of fascinating. Um, well, let me, let me present a few reasons on why I think statistics are important. Now, there's other reasons, but I just want to emphasize two. One is that statistics is clear thinking with the information that we have. Humans suffer from a phenomena known as bounded rationality. We can get lots of information, we can process a lot of that information, but we might not process it very well. We can easily go into overload mode, we can use faulty thinking and use heuristics to take mental shortcuts. Uh, there's all kinds of limitations to, to, to what we do with the information. Whereas statistics gives us a set of procedures that we know are true so that we can make conclusions about how sure we are about certain things. Since there's a lot of stuff that we don't know and we want to understand better, statistics is an extremely useful tool, especially when we're studying human behavior, because there's a huge variety of human behavior um, and that can only be, des be described from a statistical point of view. We can't say that, oh, all humans are like this or all humans are like that. We can say that usually this is the general trend that we see in humans. Let's look at a, a couple of examples where we might be able to discuss these questions, but we couldn't come up to any uh, definitive answers without actually getting data. For example, the first one is, should a woman accept to go on a Saturday evening date with a desirable man if he asks after Wednesday? Ooh, now you might think, oh, well, if he's a, if he's a good guy and uh, she wants to go out with him, she better say yes, because this might be her only choice. But the other time you might say, oh, if she shows that she's uh, already free on Saturday and nobody uh, she doesn't have any uh, friends to go out with already, it might make her less desirable if uh, she's too easy to get at such late notice. We could discuss which one of those are true an awful lot, but without data, we wouldn't really know. It's only when we get data and start analyzing it and seeing under what conditions one thing is true uh, and under what conditions the other might be true, is that we can be, that's the only time that we can be more convincing. Another example that we might uh, 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 want, want to study, especially in the field of organizational psychology, is does the way that someone dresses at a pre-employment interview predict performance? Are people that are dressed up more fancy, do they turn out to be better workers in the long run than those that kind of come in their crumpled uh, sports coat and uh, maybe a shirt that's not especially uh, ironed? Is there, is there a difference? Um, a lot of times we, uh, uh, our impressions are different of people that are dressed nicely and those who aren't, uh, but does it really make a difference in work performance? The only way that we could know is to get data and to analyze it. So statistics helps us understand reality. Now the second one is especially important to me because I, I have a certain set of values. Um, I teach at Azusa Pacific University and Azusa Pacific University is a Christian university and I'm a, and I'm a, a, a Christian too. So for me, it's really important to love and do good to other people. And I think statistics does help us love and do good to each other. There, in fact, there's a verse in the Bible that, that specifically says that love is based on knowledge. The Apostle Paul said, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth and insight. If we want to love people, we need to know and understand them, understand how humans differ from each other, understand how they're sa the same, understand how there's a range of behaviors uh, that we can expect for humans. For example, if you're in a work situation, you might not naturally understand the differences between your colleagues. We tend to think that other people that are, are like us. And so if we've never studied extroversion and introversion, 
someone who might be more introverted than us, we might assume that they're cold or distant. Uh, if we're more introverted and somebody's more extroverted, we might think, oh, they're trying to control me. This is, this is horrible. Another uh, vari variation in human behavior just has to do with orderliness. Some people are naturally orderly and want things lined up straight and organized, and they just, they're the king or the queen of paperwork. Other people are more spontaneous, uh, uh, more flexible, uh, see the less of the importance of uh, following uh, routines. And so if we don't understand how people naturally differ, we can have a hard time uh, figuring out what we can do to best, uh, uh, best love them. Now, let's start off by looking at eight key definitions. And these definitions are definitions that we'll use all throughout the course, so it's really important to pay attention to them. The first definition is data, and data is just any information that's collected about people, items, or events in question. Whatever we're studying, if we're studying people, we're going to collect data on each person. If we're studying teams, we're going to collect data on each team. If we're going to study different events, we're going to collect data on each event. Now, normally in statistics, we usually get numeric data, like people's age, or how much do you like Justin Bieber on a scale of one to five. But it also can be categorical, like sex, male or female. And if it is categorical, we tend to convert that into numbers. And for categorical data like sex, we can just choose any two numbers we want. We could say males are five and females are, are 66. We could say, Females are zero, males are one, um, but by assigning numbers to it, we can we can do uh, um, algebra on the on the data and calculate statistics for them. Now, what we would do in a regular class here is have a data collection exercise. Now, I'm going to use the data that we collect from one of my on the ground classes for uh, for this. And when we uh, collect data, first of all, we have to do something to collect it. Then we have to code it, and then we have to put it into a, uh, enter the data into a, a spreadsheet, and uh, then we're going to look and see how we can put it into a, a, a table. So let's start off, and let me bring over, uh, I have got a, no, this is the wrong one. This is the data collection survey that I am using. And we are asking a bunch of questions. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger. Just to get data. And the way that we're coding the data is one means definitely no, and five means definitely yes, and two and five are in between there. So I've got a bunch of psychological values where I'm asking about liking and what you think and what you feel here. And so I have questions like, do you like Justin Bieber? Five would be definitely no. Five is definite. One is definitely no. Five is definitely yes. Do you like the Kardashians? Do you like Star Wars? Do you passionately love your current or most recent job? Do you plan on staying at your, cur your current or job for a long time? Still using this one to five scale. Uh, then they got some questions about a boss. Do you have an awesome boss? Do you have a boss who cares about you as a person? Do you have a boss who's competent? They're similar, but not exactly the same. Uh, do you see yourself as someone who is talkative? Do you see someone who's as someone who is reser reserved? Do you see yourself as someone full of energy? Do you see yourself as someone who generates a lot of enthusiasm? Do you see yourself as someone who tends to be quiet? So these all these last five questions all have to do about extroversion and introversion. And so this one, this one, and this one all measure extroversion, and the other two are reverse coded. Um, uh, oh no, I guess this one, the, are you, you someone who's reverse reserved? That's reverse coded, and this one tends to be quiet. Are you, uh, uh, are you someone who tends to be quiet? That's reserve, reverse coded too. And then I've got some demographic questions. One was I asked how long it took people to drive to APU, Azusa Pacific, when there's no traffic. And then other, how long did it take them to drive on the day of the class? And then male or female, age and shoe size. So this is uh, 
demographic information because it's not uh, it's about them as a person, but it's not anything about what they think, feel, or um, uh, uh, believe. So this is the data. We would have each person that we want to participate in this survey um, uh, fill it out, and then we would end up with a bunch of data. Now, what we could do with it is the next thing to do would be to record it on an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, what I've done is I've coded each variable up here. Now, before we look at this Excel spreadsheet, let's go to the, the code book. What do, what do I mean by codes? Here, I've given a code to each question. So this is these are the same questions. And like the question, do you like Justin Bieber? I call that Bieber. Do you like the Kardashians? I call that the Kardashians. Do you passionately love your current or most recent job? I call that job commitment one. Do you plan on staying in your current job for a long time? Job commitment two. And I ask then boss one, boss two, boss three. Are those questions about bosses? And then the five questions on uh, extroversion, I call them E1 through E5, except for E2 and E5 that were reverse scored. The low scores uh, indicate extroversion and the high scores indicate uh, introversion. I call that E2 reverse and E5 reverse. Then we've got commute with no traffic, commute with traffic, sex, age, and shoes. And then once we get this data entered, we need to calculate some variables, some calculated variables or um, composite variables. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to unreverse the scores. And the formula for unreversing scores is that the unreversed score equals the highest score possible plus the lowest score possible. So that would be 5 plus 1 minus the reversed score. So E2, that's not reversed, would be 5 plus 1, that would be 6 minus the E2 reversed scored. And E5 is going to be 6 minus the E5 reverse scored. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the five extroversion questions and we're going to average them. Since they're unreversed scores, all measure different components of the same personality trait, we're going to make a composite variable out of the five. So I'll add up E1 through E5 and then divide that by 5. I will do that for a job commitment score 2, um, where we've got job com 1 and job com 2, and something with the relationship with boss where we add them all together and then divide by the number of uh, questions that are being asked. So this is our data um, uh, 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 collection codebook that we will use. And then we get our data, uh, we set up an Excel spreadsheet, and we uh, enter in all the numbers. So we might have, the first person might have like hated Justin Bieber, hated the Kardashians, loved Star Wars, has a pretty good, uh, uh, is, is happy with their job and is playing to, Stay there, and we would do that for each person. Each person is one line. And then after we fill in everybody that we got, one of the things that we can do on Excel is change this into a table. So if I just click somewhere where we've got data already, now if we had data for 11 people, this would all be filled up with numbers. We can change this into a table by uh, going to the Insert tab and pressing Table. And it says, is this the data for your table? I said, yep, that's where it is. And my table has headers. So I've got the checkbox. And so these are going to be the, the variable names. And I press OK. And it sets it up in a nice uh, table that's easy to read. It's got arrows if you want to sort uh, the information or filter the information. And uh, if we add extra lines, it'll continue to uh, uh, include the new information in the, the tables. So let's look at what this would look like when it's all set up. Here we have the data for uh, the, uh, whoops, let's, let's put that over here. Uh, for our, 
uh, uh, some class. And what we need to do is we need to make some composite scores. So let's, uh, um, let's make our reverse scores first. I'm going to uh, right click this column that has E2 reversed in it. I'm going to insert. And it read my mind and said, oh, that must be called the E2. Yep, that's what we're going to call it. And we're going to put a formula there that's going to, and remember, it's going to be 6 minus the uh, E2 reverse score. That's what our uh, formula is. Let me bring this back over here. So we said that the formula for E2 is going to be 6 minus E2 reversed. So we're going to do equals, that's how you introduce an Excel formula, 6 minus, and then this is L2. So I'm going to put L2 there, and then I put enter, and it calculated the first one. Now it's got this little function box here. If I click on that, it says overwrite all cells in this column with this formula. You know it. Yep, that's what we want to do. And it calculates E2 for everybody. Now, now we've got E2. Let's go for E5. Let's highlight the whole column. Insert. It read our mind that it's E5. And we're going to do equals 6 minus and then the E5 reversed is P2, P2, enter, and we'll do it for all of the cells in that column. And uh, that's uh, um, what our data is here. Now, what, uh, what else should we do? Now, we can actually get rid of these reverse scores. Now, you want to keep a backup copy, but we don't need the reverse scores anymore. And But um, one of the things that we have to do is these, the unreverse scores are memorized as a formula. So if we were to delete that column, the data used to calculate this column would disappear. So what we need to do is we need to convert these formulas into values. So I click on the first one, and then I select the all the numbers. So I go Shift down arrow. And I select all the numbers there that they're actually calculated from formulas. I do control copy and then I go to paste and I'm going to taste choose paste values and that will change the formulas. So before it had a formula up in the formula bar. Now it's got a number and that way I can now I'm going to unselect these escape and now I can go to E2 reversed and I can uh, delete this, delete that column, and we've just got E1, E2, E3, and we're going to do the same thing for the E5. So let's select all of the E5s that are calculated from a formula with the shift arrow keys. I'm going to control C to copy. I'm going to go to paste, and I'm going to paste values, the first one that's there, and we're going to paste those values there, and then we, uh, um, I can go over to the E5 column, and I can delete that now. Oh, what happened? Control Z. Let's see, did the paste values work? Oh, the paste values didn't work. So let's, uh, let's try that again. I'm going to select the whole Uh, so I'm going to do control copy, and then I'm going to go to paste, paste values, and maybe I clicked on the wrong key. Now they're all values. So now I can go to, I can delete that column, delete, and there we have just E1 through E5. So let's, let's calculate some uh, composite values now. So I'm going to com uh, combine job commitment one and job commitment two. I will insert a column there. So I right clicked on the column and chose insert. And this is just, I'm going to just call this, uh, what did I say on the, uh, I was just going to call this um, job com without a number. So I click on the title there. I go into the formula bar and I delete that three, press enter. 
And now this formula for this is going to be, it's going to be uh, E2, E, let's put in parentheses, E2 plus F2 divided by 2. And we're going to press Enter. And then we're going to select Yes, overwrite all cells there. And now we've got job commitment for both of them. Now I'm going to leave job com one and job com two in there because they're not really measuring the same thing. One was measuring uh, if they passionately love their job, and aren't, the other was measuring if they're planning on staying. So I'm going to keep all three variables. Now let's go over and create a, a relationship with boss variable. So I'm going to right click on column K, press insert. I'm going to call this. Uh, rel boss, and then I'm going to calculate that as being equal, and I'm going to do H2 plus I2 plus J2. Notice how the, the cells that I'm using are lighting up so that we can tell if I'm making a mistake or not. And then I'm going to do divide by 3. I'll do enter and ask, do you want those for all of those? Overwrite all the cells. Now look at those numbers. Those are those long decimals aren't very nice. I want to round those numbers. We can round numbers in Excel by selecting the column and then up in this under the home tab, under numbers, we can choose the format called number, which rounds it to two decimal points. And now it's a lot easier to read. Now, what other composite variable do we need to calculate? We need to calculate um, uh, extraversion. So let's go right click on column Q, insert. It's uh, E6. I'm just going to call that E. So remove the 6. And now the formula I'm going to use is equal open parentheses, L2 plus M2 plus N2 plus E, no, plus O2 plus P2, close parentheses, divide by 5, since we're adding up the five values for extraversion, to get an average, press Enter, and then I'm going to have that overwrite all the cells in this column, and there we have uh, extraversion. Now we have all of our composite data that we uh, uh, need. So this is a way of how we set up and start using uh, uh, data.